Well, hello and welcome back to the garden. Spring is pretty much in full swing now and the change between this week and two weeks ago is absolutely fantastic because even like some cherry trees and then some of the plum trees are actually blossoming now. And I've even seen our first swallow pass over a house and field and I always take note of it. So I was able to go back on the same time last year just to see when did they actually arrive and they're only two days out. Um, also first ladybird this spring so how amazing is this and as the temperatures are slowly increasing so is the germination rate of the weed seeds and there are just small weeds popping up everywhere in the garden. So because of this and also we don't know what the weather is going to bring. There is going to be one big job in the garden this weekend, which is going to be about mulching. And I also want to give you an update on seedlings and something is happening there as well that I need to fix. As you see behind me, it looks a bit refreshed because I have been mulching with wood chip. And there is a bit of a difference of what kind of a wood-based mulches you could use on beds and what you could use on footpaths. And I'll show you what I'm using where. Now this kitchen garden extension was added in March 2021. So that's three years ago. And the beds and the walkways were laid out as they are now except for the cabbage bed, which I changed slightly at the end of last year. So we have wood chip walkways and in-ground beds. And past the line of the Nepeta, it is gravel walkways and raised beds. So it's quite contrasting. But all of this was put in place to create just a clean and stable surface to walk on and to manage with the weeds. And to be honest, there are just plenty of pros and cons for both of the surfaces but personally I do prefer the wood chip at the moment. It just somehow feels a bit softer on the foot but that's beside the point. Now this wood chip though has not been replaced since it was put in three years ago either and it has been gradually breaking down and sort of nearly disappearing into the soil a bit which is just totally normal and uh, timber itself composts eventually away anyway so there is this this is all really normal and okay but as it is composting down and getting even a bit mixed with the soil it's just creating an ideal surface or environment for the weed seeds to settle into and that is something I do want to combat because I want to make my life a bit easier. So we ordered a trail load of it from a nearby manufacturer and I have been spreading it all over the kitchen garden. I really wanted to get this done now before the weeds have started growing any stronger and before they use even more nutrients in the soil for themselves.
Now I've also used it outside here, just outside of this sort of raised bed area where I'm extending the growing space to. And I was even showing you how I was cutting back the grass here just a couple of weeks ago because I do want to create like a narrow walk path between the raised bed and then where the new pumpkin bed is going to be. And for this, I used just strips of uh, black plastic directly on the soil as there are still some perennial weeds growing. And I can't really easily weed them out. And I'm just hoping that the combination of the plastic and a really thick, like four to six inch layer of wood chip would be enough to suppress them. And perhaps at the end of the summer, I can remove the black plastic from underneath and this just really becomes a temporary measure. Now I've done a very similar thing next to it here, just in front of the gooseberry planter. Now I had already dug like a trench here, just in front of the planter at, I'd say, I think at the end of last year, so around autumn time. At the moment there are no weeds directly growing underneath of this planter, but instead of using black plastic, I'm actually using cardboard, layering the soil with cardboard and wood chip and all of this then can just slowly compost down together. I don't worry about having to remove plastic underneath of it. So this type of wood chip is actually really clean and chunky because whole trees have been chopped up to create it. And the type of tree it is made out of is Sitka spruce and they come from Irish sort of plantation style forests which are really common around the countryside. They're not great for wildlife but they do intensively grow this kind of um, a tree, the Sitka spruce and we are literally, I'm looking at one of these type of plantations right in front of me and there's another one right behind our sort of field as well. So we are ourselves actually quite surrounded by these plantation style forests. Now trees grown like that in Ireland obviously have a multitude of um, purposes, but biomass and wood chip is one of them. Now being this chunky makes it really durable and a heavy duty material as we can see it ourselves as well. It has lasted us a long time and mulch for us as organic gardeners is really necessary as a weed suppressant. We don't want to use chemicals to control the weeds so mulch is our sort of saviour in that case. But 
We also want to keep the soil surface cool and retain better moisture content underneath it. And for instance, the second half of May last year was uncommonly warm and dry for us. So we soon ran into difficulty with watering. So having some part of the garden mulch with wood chip, um, but at the same time having soil underneath will allow stronger rooted plants to get access to those areas. But it will also keep the footpaths clean if we have a lot of rain, for instance, in one go, because our native clay soil will very fast run into a muddy mess and it is also very slippery. I've fallen plenty of times before, especially on the slopey ground. I would not be using this type of fresh wood chip on the actual vegetable beds though. Mulching with compost or well-rotted manure would be my preference. And the grass clippings of straw seem to create just too many places for the slugs to hide. Uh, so I've sort of avoided that as well. And this being so fresh and chunky can actually lock nitrogen in the soil while it is composting down because of the annual vegetables are so shallow rooted, their uh, growth can be actually affected by the soil nutrition imbalance. So it would be absolutely fine to use it, let's say in the orchard, but because we're actually having to buy this wood chip in, it doesn't come to us free. It gets currently just reserved for the vegetable growing areas. Now for weed suppressing and for moisture retention around, again, let's say the gooseberry bushes here, I've actually used some bark mulch. I have it here. Now, because this is semi-composted material itself already, and I'm also not pushing it all the way next to the trunk of the plant, but leaving about four inches or so of a space, this will do the job perfectly. And I'm also going to be using all of this bark mulch directly on the soil next to and around the shrubs and perennials in the cottage garden. That's why I bought it. But because we also had this planter, the undergrowth of uh, the gooseberry bushes, yeah, that needs to be mulched too. And this material is just perfect for it then. Now, another type of wood mulch we have is our own homemade one from the hornbeam hedge clippings. And this is usually a mix of branches and leaves. And also this we actually just use on footpaths at the moment because they just got shredded fresh. So if it composts down, I could potentially take some of that composted down material out of there and use in the beds. But at the moment, as they are, freshly chipped just last autumn. They're perfect uh, as the footpath. Um, and just cleaning over all these kind of uh, areas, weed free and clean. And for sure, not all wood chip and wood mulch is created equally. You do want to sort of check where is it coming from? What type of timber has been used to chip down, to create this mulch? You don't want to introduce any kind of fungus or um, chemicals to your gardens but at least we know this is clean and organic product so we can put it directly here in the kitchen garden and i'd love to use more of it but as i said because we don't get it for free we do have to buy it we sort of have to be a little bit selective where we can use it and how can or and how we can use it but yeah, this is where we're at the moment utilizing our wood chip. And I'm delighted to have this done now within the month of April, um, which I hadn't really planned for, but look, opportunity rose, so we just jumped to it and we got ourselves a, a nice big load of it. But update on the seedlings, because I really do want to show you something. Right, we're in the greenhouse now and it's a good bit warmer inside here because outside it's actually quite chilly at the moment with the breeze and everything but I do believe we have a change of weather uh, on the way so it should get much warmer and milder by the time this video comes out so fingers crossed. 
So inside here, I wanted to give you an update on the beans and cucumber seedlings. We saw those seeds together just two weeks ago. So what I had were dwarf um, French beans, uh, purple dwarf French beans. I had some soybeans. Then I had Greek gigantia, sort of big white beans. And then I was trying to test out the viability of the courgette seeds because that was an old packet and I only had, I think, three of them. So I tested them. And then I also had two sets of cucumbers because I'd be growing cucumber inside the greenhouse. So I thought I might as well get the plants going. And I had two varieties. I had Telegraph Improved and I had Emilia. So I'll show you now what actually has come through and what hasn't because there's plenty that hasn't come through. So let's start with the cucumbers. So this is Telegraph Improved. As you see, two really nice, strong seedlings, and then there's a remnant of one of them, and then there's a half of a leafed seedling. So these germinated really well, really quickly within the first week and there were four proper seedlings and um, they've been here they've been in the greenhouse through day and night and one slug then thought he'll have a feast on this one ate one of them and the second night went for the second uh, cucumber as well but i found him the second night and um, he was sent to the hens but um yeah growing really nicely and obviously as I said all the four seeds that I sowed germinated so really happy with them and this was brand new fresh seed packet that I purchased. Then I also did Amelia so the same um, way two seeds per pot but out of the four only one germinated. Now it's still a really nice and strong seedling but out of four just one and that was not a fresh packet it was that could even have been two years old older packet let's say it like that then courgette so courgette i was only testing out seed because i had three seeds left from an open packet i wasn't sure if they were good or not and totally empty there is nothing coming out of them I'm not too sad about it though, as I said, that was something I was testing out anyway. And in the meantime, I was able to get fresh seeds. Thanks to my hobby, he um, one day was going to town and he asked me, did I want any courgette plants? Seedlings, so I said, yes, absolutely. So he picked out a Firenze F1, never grown that before, but he picked it out. I just told him, look what any, anything that looks appetizing to him because he never used to eat courgettes before um, until we started to grow them ourselves and he loves it now. Um, then more of the black beauty. So this is the one that I always love to um, grow and that was the one that I had the testy, test seeds um, of as well. So really good, um, really prolific variety and really deep fruits. So I have a fresh packet of them. So I assume something out of those seeds will um, come true. But then this one, this is so pretty. This is called Limona. I haven't done, I've done yellow gourget before, but not this exact variety. And they look really appetizing and pretty as well. So maybe this weekend, like the, not this weekend, so Maybe the following weekend or at the very, like very, very early um, May, I'll sow those seeds, but there's fresh seed there. And then beans. So let's start with the good. So, cause that's the best way to compare them really. So this is the dwarf French bean, purple dwarf French bean. Every one of the seeds came true, except one in, in this one. So I would have sowed three seeds per pot and I have six, seven, eight. I have eight um, seedlings. And the same as with the cucumbers, they've been here now um, day and night. And they also germinated within a week. They were up so fast. So beautiful and strong plants. 
then soybeans so i they're exactly the same bean beans they're exactly the same seed beans that i sowed now the last time as well and previously as well i've never had success with them and this tray is just totally empty i'm a bit sad about it it could also be that i overwater them um that i was trying to keep them damp um because it di didn't pre-soak them or anything it just put them into the soil and, and try to keep the soil damp but just in case i overwater them that definitely could be the case but yeah there's literally not a sign of them and considering how the french beans i would have treated them exactly the same as these beans and they're up and they're really nice and strong and then something I'm actually disappointed about are the Greek Gigantia beans. And the same thing. Now, I have more of those seeds, so I'm going to try them again. Now, slightly differently. So let's see what you think of that option. But I do still think as well it's it was me more than the beans perhaps that i just kept them perhaps too damp but what i'm thinking of i'll be perhaps just testing the germination on them rather than just putting them in the, the soil and then not being able to see what's happening and i'll be poking around there being too nosy about it um i'm going to use a plastic takeaway container and what I have in it is just damp, really damp. I, I squeeze out as much water as possible at the moment of um, just ki kitchen paper or kitchen towel, um, which was quite a thin sheet, so I, I folded it over. So it's doubled up uh, kitchen sheet, kitchen sheet, <laughs> kitchen paper. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking that I'm going to just place the seeds that I want to test this germination on. So I'm going to just put more of the soybeans and then the Greek Gigantia, the white beans in here. Obviously, this is going to be damp. I'm going to maybe even spray a little bit more water on top of it and then seal it up, like fully close this up. I'm going to put this on the sort of radiator area so where they can get a bit of bottom heat and why I'm thinking of radiator is because our radiator is, is really sort of it low, runs on a <laughs> quite a low temperature so it wouldn't be getting any kind of massive intensive heat but it perhaps would um, behave a bit like heat mat underneath of it that's what I'm thinking so what do you think of this option I'm going to try it out anyway but if you could let me know in the comments now I don't have that many of those seeds there's only six more six more of those Greek Gigantias left but I do have more of the soybeans that's the Fiskaby variety and are they exactly the same? Let's just try it. There really isn't much now to lose. And again, if they don't germinate, then the soybean, I probably wouldn't chance again. I'm not going to go and buy more seeds of the soybeans. But um, the Greek Gigantia, I think I would then go and try to get more of it. Because I do really want to grow that. They, they look so appetizing. The size of those beans. But at least with this now I can, I can sort of keep an eye on it um, a bit better. And they're definitely going to be in, in, in damp environment in here. But um, they can't dry out and they're not soaked so and soggy. So let's just really cross our fingers and see if that helps if you have a clever way how you manage yours or you know a trick about it do let me know i'd be really interested to see it because obviously i was successful and i've been successful with beans before it's just definitely not with the soybeans and now this time with the greek gigantia either 
But this would be my update for this week. Thanks a million for joining me and until next time. And you're coming into the house.